Welcome back to the show, everyone. There's been a few changes uh, with our friend that's joining us now. Absolutely. I almost didn't recognize Chris Krug because his ginormous, the biggest beard I've ever seen, <laughs> is now gone. Chris, how are you? Where'd the beard great. go? What I joined the uh, Galliano Island Volunteer Fire Department, and they show, told me not to show back up with the beard. Now it was for a reason because the the mask. The SCBA, on you. right? It That's right. Self-contained breathing apparatus does not fit properly with uh, that much fur on your face. <laughs> now this photo particularly is from Granville Online had a contest yeah. for Vancouver's sexiest man. Boy. Who's sexier than Ryan Reynolds? And you were one that of them. That man right there. Uh, so uh, this is the Chris Krug compromise. The That's mustache. right. Yeah. I, I love that. How much are you enjoying? And, and we're going to get to the other stuff, but uh, I spent a lot of time in a volunteer fire department in Roberts Creek, uh, and what a great way to get involved in the community. How much are you enjoying that on Galliano? It's been a blast. So I moved to Galliano like six months ago, and I've been wanting to get to know folks and do more than just kind of sit on the sidelines. So I volunteered for the fire department, and they accepted me. Yeah. We get together once a week and play with all the big toys and learn lots of you know interesting skills. Last week was defibrillator operation, yeah. spinal boards, and CPR. And it becomes such a, I mean, in smaller communities in British Columbia, anybody watching this in smaller communities understand what a vital part of, uh, of the, the sort of safety net that the volunteer fire department yeah, is we, there. Yeah, we so currently don't business. have a doctor on the island, and so, you know, the fire department's wow. doing all the first responder type stuff. So it's not mostly fires that we're dealing with, a lot of kind yeah. of auto accidents. And, and it's so important to know first aid when there's no yeah. doctor on the island. That's my background. That, I've been a lifeguard when I was going through high school and college, so I knew CPR and first aid, so that was on the When basis. I get <laughs> rescued, I wanted to be <laughs> by someone with a stash <laughs> like that. Yeah, okay, we have so many things <laughs> to talk to you about. Uh, now, the Olympics seem like a million years ago, Yeah, uh, but you you have a movie that's coming out you're a part of called With Glowing Hearts. Maybe yeah. you can tell us about the movie and the tie-in to the Olympics. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the story here is uh, a lot of the activism and art taking place on the downtown east side during the Olympic Games. Well, there was a feature-length documentary film that was made during that time that has a theatrical release this weekend in four cities. That's great. And I know this got called by a lot of people, and rightfully so. This was the, the sort of first social media Olympics. I mean, it really was. It was the first time that a community got together and said, hey, wait a second, we can democratize this. We can have our say in how this is going. That's right. I mean, I think the measuring stick of was this the first uh, social media Olympics or not is like most of the stories that were broken were broken online. And then NBC and CTV and those yeah. folks, they would... They would find their stories online and then report kind of on those things and stuff. So if, right. it, if it wasn't just the times and results and medal standings you were looking for, if it was actually what's Vancouver all about, how's this affecting the city, what's going on there with the people, you were looking outside of the kind of broadcast media. Uh, tell us about uh, who's featured in this because that gives people an idea of, of sort of the scope of the documentary and the impact that this really had in, in communities in Vancouver. Yeah, so the there. film follows kind of four storylines. Erwin Ustindi and the W2 Culture and Media House. April, who um, does Fearless City, a kind of downtown east side artist empowerment uh, yeah. media literacy program. Dave Olson from the True North Media House and, and myself. So it kind of follows these um, super citizen story, activist story um, lines through the Olympic Games. And what a different perspective to look at something as big as the Olympics through, through the eyes of other people. Yeah, I mean, one of my areas of interest in my life is media studies, and the media changes so fast every day. It's like, how do you actually make an analysis of how, what, how it was different now than then? Well, you use a big international event like the Olympic Games as a lens through which to focus your media research. So every two mm -hmm. years, we go back to the table, we say, how is citizen journalism, social media, and the internet affecting mainstream media. So. And you'll be doing a Q&A uh, when the film premieres? Yeah, right? that's right. In the Vancouver premiere uh, at SFU Woodwards, I got some photos that will be displayed in the lobby and we'll be staying around and doing a Q&A afterwards. And that'll bring us nicely to this fantastic it's book. Project. It's called This is East Van, a community photography project. Tell us about this book. Yeah. Um, so Aaron and Jason are a couple artists on the downtown east side who have curated this book. I'm one of the photographic contributors to it, and it is a totally awesome and inspiring book. It really it's is. It's like 200 different photographers contributing their perspective about what is East Van. Um, you know, it's kind of this elusive, amorphous thing that means different things to different people. It's more of maybe a style or a lifestyle than a, a particular definition. But this book... And here's one that's, of your photos. That's, hey, Bev, that's right? Bev Davies, yes, Vancouver's rock and roll photographic icon right mm -hmm. there. Single-handedly put, you know, documented the Vancouver punk scene in the 70s and 80s, and you know, before blogs and social media, she was giving away her photos for free to people making ditto machines, Xerox, you know, <laughs> yeah. and stuff. To distribute, Amazing. yeah, and go she's out a total there. hero. Uh, and some of your other photographs as well. Uh, this young man, there's a, a couple of pictures of young guys uh, that you took to contribute to. Yeah, the, these are youth the from the Purple Thistle, the, and Purple Thistle is this downtown east side. Um, 
youth, unschooled youth centers. So guys who don't go to school for whatever reason, they can go there and learn video editing, web development, screen printing, bike repair, stuff like that. That's amazing. There's another, another one of the youth from Purple Thistle there. Brilliant. And maybe you can tell us, uh, the book is beautiful, it, and it, it really is incredible how many different uh, <laughs> photos are in here, and they all tell a story. Uh, where does the money go? The money goes, they um, pick a charity, and they picked, in this case, Real Youth, which is a really awesome nonprofit. They do, like, media literacy workshops for youth. So recently they went into the Burnaby, um, what do you call it, um, rep, not the reform school, but the uh, juvenile hall. They went yeah. into the Burnaby Juvenile Hall, and we're doing, like, hip-hop and spoken word production classes with kids who are <laughs> incarcerated. Yeah, so how to do it properly. What do you care about? How yeah. are we going to build this? And then sticking it on YouTube and letting them distribute. Really giving them a voice and skills. And Yeah, you know, if you have something to say, this is how you do it so that it gets. Yeah. Sort of well, the thing. other cool things about Real Youth is what they when they write their proposals, they often write the cost of the gear into the proposal. So they go and teach a workshop, teach these kids skills, and then leave the computers and cameras behind. Right? Oh, that's, that's great. great. Yeah. Uh, this whole project, though, I mean, just the premise of it was really cool. They just sort of threw it out there and said, go out, take your picture and send them to That's us. That's right, 1,200 people submitted photos, Two, 200 <laughs> were selected, and they're working on the second version of it right now. This one was great, great success. There's all the names on the back there. Yeah. And um, Well, and just that idea of, uh, you know, each person has a vision of what their neighborhood is, what yeah. they're, you know, the people, the interesting stories around there, and to, to be able to collect that all in one place and sort of, you know, Little get a di history. different perspective Absolutely. on history yeah. is pretty dope. Well, Chris, thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, and man. as we mentioned, with Glowing Hearts, a screen September 24th at SFU, Woodward's at 7 o'clock, and Chris will be sharing his photography prior to the filming, and he will also be doing a Q&A after, so make sure that you check it out. Very nice. More info at the website. You can find that out. And Chris, always a pleasure, man. Enjoy yeah, uh, so much, your time guys. on Galliano when you're back there and in the city, of course, Fights here. and fires. We're going right. to take a break.